Should you get the COVID vaccine if you're trying to get pregnant or undergoing fertility treatments? Hey friends, hot off the press, ASRM, the American Society for Reproductive Medicine, just released new guidelines today. So today is December 16th. December 16th, 2020, ASRM has new guidelines about COVID and the COVID vaccine in women who are trying to get pregnant, currently pregnant, or undergoing fertility treatments. I really hope this is the last time that I'm sitting here making a COVID video. I would love for this to be the one that wraps up the series. The first ASRM guideline that came out back in March shut IVF down completely. This is an unknown virus. We don't know how it's going to impact fertility, pregnancy. We don't know if there'll be birth defects associated. And we're really worried about hospital shortages, shortages of anesthesia and PPE. We've come such a far away from them integrating safe practices into our clinic. And now we have this whole new level of having a vaccine. This is a really exciting time for those of us in the medical field. We are ready to move past the stage of the pandemic and into the stage of control where we can start to get back to normal life. So today I want to try to answer the question the best that I can, should you get the vaccine? Now, I'm not your doctor, or if I'm your doctor, we should have a conversation about this. I'm trying to help provide you guidance so that you can make the decision that's right for you. The truth is this is a personal decision and I support shared decision-making between you and your doctor. Also, if you're curious about the impact of the vaccine on fertility, there's not one, there's not one that's been shown, but I have an entire video on it that you are free to go and check out. And while you're there, subscribe to my channel because that really helps spread our message about fertility awareness and education to more. All right, so on December 11th, the FDA approved an EUA, an emergency use authorization for the Pfizer vaccine. Pfizer and Moderna have vaccines that are mRNA vaccines. Number one thing I hear is I'm afraid to take something that's a live virus vaccine. I can't take those in pregnancy. Don't those cause birth defects? Will it integrate into my DNA? mRNA is messenger RNA. There is no live virus in this vaccine. There's not one. Messenger RNA works by telling your body to make a protein. Messenger RNA is a sequence and your body will take that sequence and it translates it into a protein. In this case, the protein is the spike protein or the S protein of COVID. It's actually not COVID. It's just telling your body to make a protein that looks exactly like it. When you have the real COVID, you're good because your body's going to see the same little spike protein and go... I already have an antibody to cure that one. Here we go. And so not by a live vaccine, you're not getting a little bit of COVID injected into your arm. You're actually getting the template, the messenger RNA that's gonna tell your body to make the protein that then can go and tell your body to make antibodies without ever being exposed to the virus. The reason why there's concern about severe allergies is that there is a polyethylene glycol coating to some of the lipid component. You have to have some type of component to have the messenger RNA carried in. And people who've had anaphylactic or severe allergic reactions to this before, especially injectable medications, may have a similar allergy to the COVID vaccine. The trials have looked very promising, meaning the group that has gotten the vaccine versus the group that's gotten the placebo after 14 days, they have shown significant improvement. Now, any vaccine is not giving you 100% immunity. So ASRM is saying here, you still need to do good things. Wear your mask, socially distant, don't go out to the bars, be careful. We also don't know if you've gotten the vaccine, can you still get the disease, can you spread it to others? And we know it takes a couple weeks to develop immunity, but we don't really know how long that immunity will last for. Okay, so let's get to the meat of it. The task force does not recommend withholding the vaccine from patients who are pregnant, trying to conceive, or lactating. These guidelines are in accordance with the American College of OBGYN, the Advisory Committee of Immunization Practices, the Society for Maternal Fetal Medicine, the CDC. Okay, everybody's in agreement. So I think this is the biggest point of the guideline. ASRM took it a notch further than other guidelines and said patients who are undergoing fertility treatments or who are pregnant should receive vaccination based on eligibility criteria. Since it is not a live virus, there's no reason to delay pregnancy attempts for any designated amount of time. And they even said, or waiting for the second dose. That's a very bold statement, meaning if ACIP has determined that you're high risk based on what you do if you're a frontline worker, regardless of where you are in your reproductive life, you should go get the vaccine or you should be encouraged to do so. That is what the guideline says. The guideline also supports shared decision making and I'm a huge fan of this and I said at the beginning. That means there's no, everybody must get the vaccine. Everybody's risk, everybody's situation is different. So if you're a frontline worker, if you're working at home, you have different levels of risk. However, if you're working from home, you're probably not eligible to go get the vaccine anywhere right now. We're really only talking currently about people who are 
actively exposed and at risk, that's who's eligible in this first round. But patients should be supported in either way. Even if you're a frontline worker, if you do not want to get the vaccine, you should be supported in that decision, shared decision making. Studies have suggested that pregnancy is a high risk state for COVID, meaning you are more likely to get admitted to the ICU, intubated, and have a higher risk of death. Becoming pregnant makes you high risk. We want to make you lower risk by protecting you with the vaccine. There's other factors that may make you even higher risk. If you're pregnant or contemplating pregnancy, you have high blood pressure, diabetes, obesity, then if you get COVID, your risk may be even more severe. So we need to strongly encourage at least good decision making and communication with your doctor for these situations. Okay, I want to scream this one really loud. Because the COVID-19 mRNA vaccine is not a live virus, there's no association with stillbirth, infertility, birth defects, first trimester loss, second trimester loss, none of it. Yes, pregnant and lactating women were excluded from the phase three trials. However, some people did become pregnant. We did not see a higher risk of loss in those patients. Although notably, they haven't given birth yet, so we don't have definitive data, but that is reassuring that there were equal pregnancies in both groups and no higher incidence of loss or miscarriage. Okay, I've gotten this one a lot too. Any vaccination has some potential side effects. Usually it's like local tenderness, fever, and malaise. What about getting a fever when you're pregnant? We've always heard getting a fever or elevating your temperature is bad. Yes, Getting a fever in the first trimester can potentially predispose you to miscarriage. However, that's usually a severely high fever accompanied by an illness, not just a vaccine-related fever. One of the top concerns from fever has been the risk of a neural tube defect. And this can be mitigated even in the setting of fever by taking appropriate doses of folic acid. So make sure you're taking your prenatal vitamins with at least 400 micrograms of folic acid every day before you're ready to get pregnant or while you're trying to conceive. And we should probably say that the fever associated with the vaccine is going to be of a lower level than we would expect you to have the fever if you actually got the virus. So I think that argument's a little bit null and you can take Tylenol, which is safe in pregnancy to lower your fever in either situation. Okay, in bold, patients who conceive in the window between the first and the second dose should still get the second dose, okay? We are not going to compromise your protection from the disease that we know can be deadly and pregnancy makes it higher risk for you just because you fall pregnant in the in-between interval. There's no reason why we should think that. And then here we go. Physicians should promote vaccination to the public, community's patient. We need to be educated so we can talk about this well. I know the fear of an impact on pregnancy, your fertility, or reproduction is alarming. I, I totally understand it, and I'm here to support you. However, along with the American Society for Reproductive Medicine, your fertility doctors want you safe. I promise we're on the same team. We want the same goal. We want you to have your healthy baby, your family that you want to have, and we would not be advising or recommending something that we thought would cause more harm than good. I've linked in the show notes the guidelines, so feel free to go and read more. I'll take any questions you have on the vaccine. Of course, this is the data current as of December 16th, 2020. This may change as time goes on, but I will answer the questions to the best of my knowledge. I would love it if you would subscribe to the channel. That helps us in growth and spreading knowledge to more. And as always, you can follow the As A Woman podcast for more in-depth fertility topics, or you can follow me on Instagram at Natalie Crawford, MD. Thanks, friends.